forget everything you think you know about professional bowling. It's way more than just knocking down pins. It's dynamic. Who do you think you are? I am. It's compelling. It's explosive. And you're about to see it in a whole new way. I'm an athlete. I'm a competitor. I'm a pro bowler. I'm a pro bowler. I'm a pro bowler. And the PBA is ready to roll. Right now on Fox. Training Center here in Lake Wales, Florida, as Fox Sports presents the PBA Clash. It's the final event of 2018 and a kickstart on a whole new way of life for the PBA. Fox Sports famously began back in 1994, televising the NFL. NHL and Major League Baseball followed. So did college football, college basketball, NASCAR slid in, soccer exploded. Today, though, we debut the newest sport in our stable. Couldn't be more proud to welcome you to the first edition of the PBA on Fox Sports. Rob Stone joined by the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. We're back, baby. We're back, man. It's good to be back. Isn't it brother. good? Oh Somewhere Peaches and Herb is playing I reunited. Know, right? I, so good to see you. I can hear that in my head right now. I uh, think it's you singing it. <laughs> what a wonderful way uh, and probably a really proper portrait in place today to show what this new marriage between the PBA and Fox is all about. Boy, you couldn't be more right about that. I mean, there's so much electricity and excitement in the sport of bowling nowadays because of the marriage with Fox and it all gets kicked off here with this event. You've got the top eight players in the world bowling in a sudden death format. It just doesn't get any better than that. And this only lights the fuse for what's down the road in 2019 on Fox. We've got major events. The PBA League is back and an all new PBA playoffs. Exciting times for professional bowling, Rob. PBA playoffs, where are they being held? Portland, Maine. Portland, I Maine. cannot wait to get there in the new year, but we are in Central Florida first. And here's your eight competitors for this event. Five Americans, three from overseas. Combined, Randy, these eight, 54 tour titles. That includes 15 majors. We have three former or current players of the year on today's show. And let's start with kind of a unique format. Yeah, it really is. All eight players are going to bowl a 10th frame. The low score will be eliminated, will be down to seven players, and then the format changes to one ball. Low score out of those seven will be eliminated until we're down to our final two. Those two bowlers will bowl a full game. High score takes home the PBA Clash title. And we begin the PBA on Fox with perhaps the most recognizable face in all of pro bowling. The four-time PBA Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte. G'day, I'm Jason Belmonte. I'm from Orange, New South Wales, Australia. There's very little that Jason Belmonte hasn't accomplished in his 10 years on the tour. 18 titles, nine of those majors, and he's been named player of the year four times in five seasons. He's a superstar in every sense of the word. The success that I've had is honestly mind-blowing to me. I often ask my wife to slap me across the face just to make sure this is all real life still. There's no way the missus is slapping him across the face. Come on. Well, if he doesn't do his chores, mm. he still has to do those. But this guy's been a powerhouse on our tour for over half a decade. Two-hand bowler, so much power in his game at an absolute elite level. Well, we talked to him earlier, and he said he was going to use urethane as we take a look at his style, the two-handed style made famous by that man right there. And he said, I'm going to go with urethane because I can keep it in the pocket. Needs this to get one more shot here in this elimination round. Go, go, go. Max score here in the elimination round is a 30. 
Low man eliminated. Jason looking for a strike now. He'll leave with 20. And this is a brutal format. You want to talk about a sprint. What would be faster than a sprint? Uh, <laughs> kind of like a drag race. A good one. There's your strike track powered by Spito. Oh. Yeah. There's your 20. Jason Belmonte looking for 10, and that's exactly what he gets, but he gets a little bit of help just to the right of third arrow. Drifts just a pitch high. The ball goes right by the nine, but he gets a little help from his friend rolling the nine out of there for 20. And Belmo downstairs with the third member of our broadcast team, Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Rob. So, Jason, good news is, is you're in the lead. <laughs> Bad news is you have 20. Think that's going to hold up? Yeah, I don't know. I'm in the lead and I'm coming last at the same time. Um, look, that was the goal, right, is if you weren't going to strike out, at least force all the other guys to have to double to beat you. So 20, yeah, it's a reasonable score. I'll sit down on the bench and just see what happens. Well, you're going up against the top seven guys in the 2018 PBA season. So uh, how much would it mean to you to win this tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, any time that you're competing against the best in the world and to, to hold a trophy at the end of the day, it's always meaningful to us players. Uh, obviously, there's still a long way to go before that happens, so I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch, but um, yeah, hopefully one of these other guys just bowls 19. That'll be all right. All right, well, good luck to you. Cheers. We're going to send it back to the guys in the booth. Yeah, long way to travel for three rolls. Yeah, no doubt. So he's looking for a little help, obviously. Three-time World Bowling Riders Bowler of the Year, Dom Barrett. I'm Dominic Barrett, and I'm from Colchester, England. The Dominator started 2018 with a victory in Japan, then finished strong with that season-ending win at the U.S. Open, the second major of his career. Barrett's first major came all the way back in 2013 when he became the only Englishman to ever conquer the PBA World Championship. I don't really see it so much as bowling in England or bowling in the USA. It's about wanting to be a part of the PBA Tour, wanting to win on the PBA Tour be a champion, be the best in the world. The PBA Tour is top of our sport. And Dom, a daddy right now. Congratulations to he and Cassie. They welcomed Colby into the world in August. Talked to us the other day about how that's impacted his life. Tougher to leave home, particularly when you are living in England and coming to the US yeah, for the majority of your bowling. Absolutely, a little more pressure nowadays for Dom Barrett. <laughs> Good start there for Don Barrett. Take a look at this ball, which is pretty much high flush in the pocket. Second shot for Dom. Belmo before him, dropped to 20. <laughs> Messenger got the 10. It keeps it on the lane and stays behind the foul line. He's guaranteed to move on. Watch this last pin on the right gets taken out by the always famous messenger. Love a good messenger. I miss my messengers. <laughs> Dom's third shot. More than enough. Yes, sir. He will move on with room to spare 28. Right now, it's Jason Belmonte, the odd man out, but it's early. The five-time PBA Tour titleist, Anthony Simonson. Anthony Simonson, Little Elm, Texas. Simonson is the youngest player to ever win a major when he took home the 2016 USBC Masters at the age of 19. This year, the now 21-year-old captured two more tour titles, bringing his career total to seven. If you keep pushing and keep working for what you want, uh, you, know, you can make anything happen. I still got a young age, a long career ahead of me, and just keep pushing and see what happens. Anthony, awfully mellow in that conversation, but I think it's one of respect. He's a youngster on the tour. 
is awfully proud of where he is and how quickly he's been able to elevate his game onto the PBA level. I agree, and he's been able to stay humble along the way. He's a great kid and has a lot of respect for not only the game, but for his competitors. A lot of power behind that one. Yeah, meeting with him yesterday, Randy, I got the impression that this was a pro that you have maybe semi-taken under your wing, or at least you can relate to on a couple levels. You know, he stayed at my house a few times for uh, for events. Anthony is, uh, he's a bowler. I mean, he grew up in a bowling center. He, that it's all he does. And he eats, sleeps, lives, breathes, he travels the world in pursuit of the Holy Grail. And, I'll tell you what, there's not a tournament he won't bowl, and there's not a country he won't visit to bowl. But you know what he won't do a lot of? Practicing. Yeah, he's not a big practicer. Oh. Yeah! Back-to-back -back jacks! Our strike track information showing us where Anthony Simonson is at the arrows, which is right around the, just right of third arrow, as you see that nice messenger with a little insurance right behind it. And he goes through. Jason Belmonte there on the left, the low man right now at 20. His day may be done already, but we still have five more bowlers to go. The 2018 PBA Player of the Year, Andrew Anderson. Hi, I'm Andrew Anderson. I'm from Holly, Michigan. 24-year-old Andrew Anderson made his presence known on the PBA Tour with two titles in 2018. One of those, a major, the USBC Masters. He may be a newcomer to some, but Anderson already a force to be reckoned with here in the PBA. I would say there's a, it's been a long time coming. Uh, that's how I look at this year. Um, definitely my coming out party, as some people will look at it. Uh, to win two in one year is uh, crazy enough, but to win a major at that is, is pretty awesome. Randy, you and I have spent a lot of time talking about Andrew Anderson, his first year on the tour, you know, hardly a blip he created, and then this explosion this season. I, I don't know of any other player that won player of the year in his second year on tour. Take a look at the strike track numbers there, Rob. 22.2 boards, that's at the arrow, so that's just left of fourth arrow. And look at the amount of arc he's creating. He's going all the way out to just right of the eighth board and back. You see his RPM up at the top, that's his rev rate at 424 and throwing it at almost 19 miles an hour. This info powered by Specto, an amazing look at how these guys attack lanes. Look, when I'm showing up at the birthday party, I'm going right down the middle at about what? 10 miles an hour. <laughs> about about 13 with a rev rate of about 190. Yeah, on a good day, my friend. There we go. So this is what being a professional bowler is all about. Check out the position at the arrows. Within a half an inch of each other, Back-to-back -back shots, the break point just a little bit inside that last shot at the ninth board, the rev rate and ball speed almost identical. Perfect 30 for the player of the year. All right, our next Four are on the way, starting with E.J. Tackett, one of three former or current PBA Players of the Year, making their Fox PBA debut today. PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com.
The Central Florida area, home to more than 550 lakes, where you can do everything from fishing to wakeboarding, and you can even take an airboat tour through the exotic marshlands. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, back here with you in Lake Wales. Take a look at our leaderboard right now. Belmo, the lone man. Low score eliminated. He may have flown all the way from across the world for three rolls here in Central Florida. I'll tell you, four players he's not rooting for. <laughs> Take a look at the strike lines, or the strike track, rather, for our four players that you just saw. Belmonte going the straightest. If you look at the numbers, Belmonte 12 at the arrows to eight. He's using urethane. Simonson 14 to seven, and playing the most angle, Andrew Anderson. You can see that orange line, he's much deeper, covering much more territory. And Anderson, the only one with a perfect 30 so far. The 2016 PBA Player of the Year, E.J. Tackett. Hi, I'm E.J. Tackett from Bluffton, Indiana. The 2016 Player of the Year has only been on the tour for seven years, but Tackett has already compiled a Hall of Fame-worthy career, 12 tour titles, including two major championships. The 2016 World Championships, when my dad was there, and we, we had that, that embrace after I had won, it was by far the best moment in my bowling career that, that I will ever have. There will be nothing that can ever happen that will be better than that moment. <laughs> That embrace, it reminds me of when I found out the PBA was coming to Fox and you and I hugged it out, man. Yeah, very good similar. Good energy, good yes. emotion. <laughs> really like this kid, EJ Tackett. Yeah, confident, but not in your face confident. Ag agreed, and a freak of nature. What he can do to a bowling ball is just incredible. And he's got some heavy lifting to do with this second shot. Beautiful. He's waited a long time to throw one shot, and right now Jason Belmonte is kind of liking what he's seeing. EJ is going to try to get his bowling ball into this area here, throw the two over into the ten, and the ball will take out the four pin. Missed it. Belmo's alive. Belmonte back in the game. EJ Tacky cannot go around Belmo. Beautiful. Not a moment to celebrate, and that boy, that's tough sledding for EJ Tackett. EJ doesn't even get to throw another shot, guys. Remember, 10th frame, if you don't mark, you don't keep going. Yeah. So he's done with eight. The two-time BBA Tour champion, Stuart Williams. Hi, I'm Stuart Williams, and I'm from Ellesmere Pool, England. Williams is getting ready to celebrate his 10th year on the PBA Tour, and now he even calls the USA home. But Stu's still getting used to the transition from his native England. I think the strangest thing for me is um, living in Phoenix is the fact that the sun's shining on Christmas Day. That's a very odd transition for me. We don't really have seasons in Phoenix. It's just sun and heat. It's either hot, very hot, or impossible to deal with. So apparently he's implying there are seasons in England. Thought it just rained. <laughs> <laughs> right? Stu, what do you want? You want rain or sun? <laughs> Wait, in England, the, the, it's damp, damp, and more Damper. damp. It's <laughs> <laughs> all he needed. Any mark, trip four will work. 16.3 board, just inside cool. third arrow and a nice trip four action. And again, all he needed was a mark, actually nine or a mark. Actually just nine. <laughs> right. Nine will do fine. Nine and an air ball will get you through. There's his numbers, location at the arrows right there. Oh, a little left. Yeah, that oh, time he was two boards left of his intended target or, or where he was on his first shot. Remember, he was at the 16th board, and now this one, a good almost two and a half boards left. 
That info courtesy of Strike Track. <laughs> Missed it, but it doesn't matter. Save! Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. You got it, Stewie. You are safe. You will move on. EJ Tackett remains the low man at eight. All right, coming up, it's the last two of our top eight. Marshall Kent rolls your way, and we point out Jacob Buttruff. We welcome you back to Lake Wales, Florida. The PBA on Fox debut presentation. You're watching the PBA Clash coming your way from the renowned Kegel Training Center. Today's oil pattern currently being projected on the lanes right there. It's named for one of the PBA's all-time greats, Don Johnson, the two-time player of the year. He won 26 career PBA Tour titles and two majors, including the PBA Tournament of Champions. And now in that 1970 TOC final, Johnson chasing 300. And it was a moment recently voted the PBA's greatest during the tour's 60th anniversary celebration year and the subject of our Ebonite flashback. 25,000 in his pocket, 10,000 on this ball. Solid 10, Chris. Unbelievable. Brutal, brutal moment for the legend Don Johnson as we transition to our next competitor here in the 10th frame competition. The four-time PBA Tour titleist, Marshall Kent. My name is Marshall Kent, and I'm from Yakima, Washington. This former Rookie of the Year is the owner of four tour titles, but Kent's last victory came nearly a year and a half ago in Oklahoma. Here in 2018, Marshall's been in the hunt multiple times, but has come home empty-handed every time. 2018 was bittersweet because I've made more finals this year, but I haven't won yet. I feel like I'm really close to winning a lot. I just got to keep putting myself there. Marshall talked to us yesterday about his improvement in the patience game feels his mental game is much stronger than it used to be. And he'll move on. Well, he decided to take the straight route, as you can see by strike track. He's well right at the arrows. And not using urethane, so he did it with ball speed. 20 miles an hour, almost 20 and a half miles an hour, and just outside a second arrow. Fastest shot yet. Pretty much a carbon copy. That's the way you want it. Figure it out early and keep working it. Right here, he's giving him the heater, Ricky. Just firing it right, just right a second arrow. All players break point is right around the seventh, eighth, or ninth board down lane, no matter what angle they're playing. You know, he got three in a row there. You know what, if he would have gotten one more strike in a row, you know what they call that? I don't. I don't, you have to help me out next year with that. Okay. So Marshall Kent and Andrew Anderson both with a 30. They will both move on. One more to go. The four-time PBA Tour titleist, Jacob Buttruff. Hi, I'm Jacob Buttruff from Tempe, Arizona. He's the winner of the 2018 PBA 60th Anniversary Classic, his fourth tour title. And while some may focus on his unusual yeah. style, yeah. for Buttruff, attitude is everything. When you've already won that first time, that second time, you just gotta take every tournament with just no fear and go out there and give it all you got. 2016 was kind of his coming out year. Last year was clearly his best by far on the tour. And he'll move on as well. 
Our only southpaw in this competition, Rob, could be dangerous. He's got that whole left side of the lane to himself. I think he likes this song. I do. Well, you know he picked it out. Sometimes, you know, when you get the good song on, you yeah. don't want it to end, so maybe yeah. go back to the fan a little bit longer. Yeah, you, you know what my, Try off the hand. You know what my song is usually? What's that? So you had a bad day. Oh, come now. I'm you kidding. can do better than that. Kidding. Doesn't matter. Uh -oh. Boy, this one just missed, Randy, huh? Yeah, it just it goes right by the eight pin. Kind of like that shot that we saw Belmo leave, except Belmo got the little love tap on the nine. For those of you that don't know, Jacob Buttrip actually uses a conventional grip. That was something you discovered the other day with him. Caught you off guard. It actually did. I had no idea. It looked, looked like a semi-fingertip, but it is a conventional grip. So Buttruff takes a seat with a 20, which is plenty to see him advance. We started with eight, we're down to seven. EJ Tackett's eight pins, see him eliminated. When we return, an infamous 299, and the one thing the entire PBA is looking forward to in 2019. Plenty to do outdoors here in Central Florida. You can play some golf, go on a bike ride, take in a ball game as well. The Detroit Tigers have made Lakeland, Florida their spring training home for more than 80 years. And spring training right around the corner here. Randy, you're looking at those golf course shots, salivating. Yeah, except for the water on the right. right. Yeah, I didn't like that. All right, happy holidays. Welcome back to the PB on Fox. You know why I'm laughing? It's my dad. <laughs> it's my dad. My mom's got her head buried in her phone. Oh, no. She missed She's her. She's become a millennial. Who are you? <laughs> I don't know who they are anymore, Randy. She missed her spot. What is she doing? All right. So here we go, Randy. It is rapid fire one ball elimination. Jacob Buttruff is up first. Yeah. Oh, lefty drops them all. Got a good look to the pocket. He's the only one on that side of the lane, and that might bode well for Jacob Buttruff moving forward in this event. Remember, we are now one shot. Low pinfall eliminated. And we'll keep going through that, Randy, till we're down to our final two, and they'll play a match. There you go. Marshall Kent drops them all. In our first round, Marshall Kent, the most accurate. He was within less than half an inch of his target at the arrows and less than an inch at the break point. Also the fastest speed between 20.6 and 20.9. They're not booing, they're stewing. <laughs> Huge break there, tripping the two late. So right now, Stu Williams, your low man with the nine. Oh, eight was bad. A celebrity version of this clash has become really a staple at the annual CP3 PBA Celebrity Invitational event. American League MVP Mookie Betts of the Bo Sox was a past winner. This our Columbia 300 fun fact. And you thought all he could do was play baseball, folks? Ooh. That can actually bowl. He actually bowled a 300 game at, uh, I think it was two years ago, the World, World Series, Series of Bowling. Of Bowling. Yeah. Yep. And he got his PBA 300 ring. Yep. Where? The Fenway Park. How cool is that? Pretty right? cool. Uh, tune into the 2019 edition of the CP3 PBA Celebrity Invitational Super Bowl Sunday, February 3rd, right here on Fox. EJ Tackett eliminated, so here's Andrew Anderson. Any ties will go to a roll-off, Rob. Fired up. You know we're going to see a couple. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. We might be looking at a roll-off right there. You see all these great students from Weber <laughs> International University just down the road from Let, the Kegel Center here, and a lot of them here to cheer for Mr. Anderson, who spent some time bowling here. 
There's Anthony Simonson from Little Elm, Texas, just north of Dallas. Hit the tour, Randy, at the ripe old age of 17. We've got our first ties thus far, unless a player gets eight. Three nines, oh, three in nines a row now. excuse me, three nines in a row. Williams Anderson Simonson here, and there's the reacts. Dom Barrett, Colchester, England, just east of London. You know what we talked about, don't you? Soccer? Bingo. <laughs> Another nine. Good nine. Let's take it. We now have a four-way tie. Let's take Belmo. He's through. Now that left lane proved problematic for a majority of our competitors. Started with eight, down to seven, and four of those seven, Randy, with nines. Four-way roll off. Feels like a PBA record. We could be here for a while. So they're going to stay in the left lane. Yes, I <laughs> love this crowd. You hear them <laughs> saying, Stu, it's Williams. And normally when you see a player go down to one knee after he lets go of it, it's a pretty good indicator that he likes that shot. Anderson, more on his antics a little bit later in the show. The thing that impresses me the most about Andrew is his great touch at the release point. Yeah. Oh. Williams, Unlucky. Williams will go through at a minimum. Remember, his last shot was a blower 10 where the messenger went right in front of the 10 pin. This time it's a ring 10. Yep, good sad face emoji for Anderson. Back to back nines. Simonson. Needs to hook. Oh, it does. He'll move on. And up next, Dom Barrett. Barrett with the strike moves on. With a nine, we have another roll off. With anything less than nine, Dom is done. Get in there. Play on, Dom. Beautiful shot. Bumps the 10 late. Okay. Andrew Anderson's day is done. I guarantee you this will not be the last you hear from him today. That's a tease. And next season. Agreed. When we return, more rapid fire. One bowl elimination from Lake Wales. Dom Barrett moves on. Ditto for Belmo. Welcome you back to the 2018 PBA Clash on Fox. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler here with you. A new feature on our shows. It's called Go Bowling with Randy. He's going to answer questions, provide tips, offer opinions, whatever you ask of him. So our first question, Liz Parker from the Go Bowling's Facebook page. The Kegel Training Center is known as a great facility for bowlers to train. For those of us who haven't been there, what are some of the great features? Randy? What makes the Kegel Training Center so special and so unique, aside from the great coaching staff and this wonderful facility, are some of the unique training tools that are offered here at Kegel. Tools such as the Arrow, a 3D reference tool, Specto, the ball tracking system that gives information about each and every shot thrown, the Torch, a targeting tool that reflects a ball path on the lane, Clutch Bowling, a projection system that shows a variety of graphics on the lane. And my favorite, the mirror. See yourself bowling in real time. Well, there you have it, folks. You want to take your game to the next level? You want to bowl like a pro? Make your way down to the Kegel Training Center in Lake Wales, Florida. In a shocker, Randy, you like the mirror. I'm stunned by that. <laughs> 
Chris Chartrand, the CEO of Kegel there on the left. And our thanks to Jonathan Michelle Mitchell as well, the proprietors here at Kegel. Three wonderful host and hostesses for our time here in Central Florida. So while we were away, round three started off with Jason Belmonte. Avoids the split, but gets nine. And then everybody else striked in order. Dom Barrett. Anthony Simonson. Stu Williams. Stu. Marshall Kent. Jacob Butruff. Belmo, sad face, he's gone. All right, we continue our single ball elimination. Mr. Buttruth is up first. Also using urethane, that conventional grip, the way he rolls that wrist under that ball. Well, he's really locked and loaded right now. Rev rate of over 500. Marshall Kent. Hey. Uh -oh. Way right. Yeah. You can see it obviously on that strike track. Oh. What was that? Well, he struggled with the Brooklyn the last time he was up, Randy, and then this. And typically, that's what you see is when a player. Misses left or right, there's the overcompensation that tends to creep in. So Williams, Simonson, Barrett, all they need is an eight to move on. That's enough. Oof. Anthony Simonson is up as Stu takes a seat. Simonson left school, not college, high school, his freshman year, to throw all of his energy into this sport. A seven. We might have a roll off. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. Neither was no. Anthony. Now Marshall Kent was packing his bags. He's still alive. 2 8 10 and could have easily gotten that back pin out for an eight count, but not to be for Anthony Simonson. Dom Barrett up, methodical approach. Just needs eight. He goes through. But we're not done here in round four. We have a roll up. Am I good? The interesting thing about what Marshall's doing though is he's playing a completely different line than any of the other players. I wonder if it'll hold up. That was, better. That was a good shot. And I wonder if he keep, continues to advance, if he will stay with that. <laughs> You see all the other players are in, kind of opening up the, the uh, this Don Johnson 40-foot oil pattern. You're going to see Anthony Simonson do that. Marshall Kent's playing right of everyone. Kent playing with house money, if you will. Simonson still has that seven lurking in the back of his brain. Unload, my friend. You are down to the final four. More one ball elimination next. You are watching the 2018 PBA Clash on Fox.
We welcome you back to Lake Wales and what a calendar we have for you in 2019. 30 telecasts starting January 6th. Four majors, including back-to-back -back weeks in February. The Chris Paul Celebrity Classic and the World Series of Bowling are back. And then that one thing everybody on the tour is extra excited about, 10 straight weeks of the PBA playoffs. That starts in April. Fox FS1 and Fox Sports app will have all the action. So we're back now for round five. Only four of the top eight remain, and Dom Barrett is going to lead off. <laughs> the 10 to drop. Dom's been almost perfect. And he gets a nice love tap on the 10. That's a huge break. As we narrow this field down. Where it seems like if you don't strike, you don't move on. Won't we'll fall down. So Stu in trouble with the nine. Boy, that 10 was rattling. Another messenger in front. Marshall Kent thought he was done in the last round. Immediately looked down at his footing. Huh? We could be looking at another roll off. <laughs> Play the round. Well, another Brooklyn for Marshall Kenny looks down, and this may be because he's trying to throw it so hard in order to play that straighter line. Again, questioning how long he's going to continue to try to play that outside line. 24-year-old Jacob Buttruff grew up in Vegas. Now lives in Arizona. The lone lefty. That's eight. He's done. Unexpected. A lot of times players will give it away whether or not they really liked it, if they threw it well. I'm not sure that was Jake's best. Well, Marshall Kent trying to get some energy in the building. He needs some energy on his lane. He has really struggled to survive the last couple rounds just to get here the lone American left. Well, his last three out of four shots have been very suspect. Two Brooklyn, one that uh, went light and only one flush strike in his last four attempts. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> I can laugh every time I'm hearing the stews. <laughs> it's awesome. This is a real good guy. We really enjoyed our time with him. Originally from England, now residing in Phoenix. <laughs> them all in the drop. He's a big New England Patriot fan, and we were talking to him about that miracle in Miami that happened a few weeks back. Yep. Just kind of shook his head and smiled and said, man, I can imagine being in Belichick's press <laughs> conference that day, right? Hey, rolled in with a Tom Brady jersey yes. on as well. Yes. His son's name is Brady. Yes. Yes. There's Tom Barrett. Let's do it again. Well, if you like strikes, swipe right. Say it with me. All right, three man roll off. Round six roll off, left lane. There it is. Wow. Just shreds the rack again, Marshall Kent does. He's playing the lanes a good eight boards to the right of the other players. Watch the head pin as it gets knocked silly, goes to the sidewall, comes across, and enters concussion protocol. Those sidewalls and the base of the 10 pins, ultra thick, ultra strong here at Kegel. A lot of pin action. Are you kidding me? Oh, that was a kick. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, just an awful break for Stu Williams. Just slightly demasculating. Dom needs a nine or better to move on. Barrett, Kent, in our final. Come on, man. 
Talk about some uh, extended play for Marshall Kent. Just when it looked like he was left for dead, he's going into the finals. So Kent in position to close out 2018 with the win. Ditto for Don Barrett. Welcome you back to the Kegel Training Center, Lake Wells, Florida, located just between Tampa and Orlando. The 2018 PBA class started with the world's best eight. We've reduced the field down to two. Marshall Kent set to take on 33-year-old Dom Barrett. Full match set to kick off on the left lane. Barrett is up first. <laughs> That's how you start. And take a look at his strike track numbers there on the right. This is his location at the arrows, just inside the fourth arrow. And this is his location down lane at the break point. Strike track presented by Specto. The creator, Orr Avram, who works for Kegel, along with Brent Sims and Bob Ford, who hand us all this great information and will for the entire 2019 season. Marshall Kent leaves the 10. He's moved, Marshall's moved in a little bit, about just inside a second arrow going out to the six board, but Don Barrett, a good five to six boards left of that. And a good spare. So strike track is going to show you Dom Barrett's line on the lanes. And we're going to take a live look at how Marshall Kent's approach and shot lines up to it as we begin the second frame. Wow, that was even farther right, Rob. Seventh board. You, you could see the two lines now, you know, this this line on the right. This is Marshall Kent. This is Don Barrett. What a difference those two lines are to the pocket. That curled really late. Yeah, it looked like his hand stayed in a little bit too long. You could see that the location at the arrows was way inside of where he's been all day long. Not to mention the fact that his ball speed actually came down. This is usually created by a grab at the bottom, but that's well left of target. Throws that one in for the spare to close out the second. There, we mentioned earlier, a dad for the first time, his son Colby born in August. How about the bowling DNA in Colby, right? Not just Dom but his lovely wife, Cassie, a former Australian national team member as well. Yeah, there, there's some uh, pretty good games in that household. Let's go. Get on the <laughs> Back on the strike train. Yeah, much better shot there, Rob. And you can see that's a good four to five boards right of his last delivery. Dom takes a seat, Marshall Kent pops up. Native of Yakima, Washington, fifth year pro, moved to Vegas in October. Right through the nose. Three, six, nine, ten, and break point difference was a board left, and that's all it took to get that one to go through the nose. This is not the, the, the spare that you want to shoot a lot of out here on the PBA Tour because of that back pin, the nine pin. Look out. Swings it up. Hard way. 
And that's our hammer tough spare replay. Kent, two-time collegiate bowler of the year at Robert Morris, Illinois in downtown Chicago is telling us that program was recruiting him at the age of 14. They can see a talent as well as we can. Good shot there by Marshall Kent. These players play in the lanes about 14 boards different ro difference, Rob. And that's a lot. That's a big difference. You normally don't see that, especially with two players that throw it as similar as these two players do. Three and a half frames down in our final match. Dom Baird is up next as he duels Marshall Kent for the final title of 2018. I'm Andrew Anderson, and you're watching the PBA on Fox. Uh, what a year for Anderson in only his second season on the PBA Tour. He recorded seven top five finishes, including wins in the Jonesboro Open and the USBC Masters. It was more than enough for him to be recognized earlier today with the sport's highest honor. And the winner this year had an incredibly inspirational year. And uh, he's got a long, great future ahead. The PBA Player of the Year Award Mr. Andrew Anderson. It was a uphill battle for a lot of it. And, um, you know, a couple years ago today, I was questioning if I was ready for the PBA Tour, if I wanted to uh, take that step. And uh, I can promise you today, I'm very happy I did. Uh, it's, it's truly an incredible feeling. Also honored, the PBA Rookie of the Year, Cameron Doyle, the 20-year-old, cashed in seven of the 15 events he entered in 2018, even managed a third-place finish in Delaware. Congrats to both of these talented players. You know big things are ahead for these two on the tour. We get back to action now at the PBA Clash here in Lake Wales. Dom Barrett and Marshall Kent slugging it out in our final match. Let's take a look at our game summary, courtesy of Strike Track. Uh, there's a lot of numbers here, Randy. Melt it down for me. Well, the, the two biggest numbers that really stick out are these two right here. This is location at the Arrows. You can see that Dom Barrett is a good 14 boards left of Marshall Kent. He's playing a lot more angle through the front part of the lane. All the other stuff looks fairly similar with the exception of ball speed. So since Marshall is playing so much straighter, he has to throw it so much faster to keep it online. Is that the way Dom usually approaches things? Pretty close to what he likes to do. And Dom is up. He can max out with a 280. Strike, spare, strike as he sets up to close out the fourth. Talk to Dom about his biggest win to date, the U.S. Open. Won it on Halloween day, and he said, I, I followed my gut a lot on that day. There's so many guys out here who, who lean on, on their coaches or, or other providers of information, and we got the sense through our conversation that he's a guy who believes in himself and his abilities to read the lanes better than anybody else. Well, let's keep in mind that he ran the ladder, and he went through four different bowling balls on his way uh, to victory at the U.S. Open. So he made all the right moves and all the right adjustments, and it paid off. And that, I think, uh, bodes well for what you just said and how much he trusts his own abilities. We asked him about 2019. His quote to us, I'm going to keep doing what I've always been doing. It's been successful so far. Why change it? Did mention he'd like to lose a couple pounds, though, and uh, this is not the time of the year to lose a couple pounds. Well, it looks like he's using a different ball on the left lane, and that left lane also looks like it's hooking. <sighs> there you go. 
Dom cleans it up. And this ball just breaks loose as it comes off the end of the pattern. It also looks like the left lane might be curving more. So we move to the right lane right now. Here's Kent. Oh boy. Oh boy. Could be looking at our first open frame here. Open frame fifth. Trying to get the ball to the right side of the three pin and gets it pretty flush on the three pin. And it's an open frame for Marshall Kent in the fifth. He sits at 88, down 10. <sighs> Able to move on from that open frame nicely. Hey, Rob, it almost looks to me like Marshall really likes the left lane and, and uh, Dom Barrett doesn't. It looks like this is Marshall's good lane. And the one he's more confident on. He mentioned to us how, how he's been impressed by his mental strength as of late. And you just saw it on display right there. An open frame, walk over to the next lane, drop all 10. He said Mike Jasnow has helped him with his mental game a lot in the last couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that hurts. And right now, folks, what you're seeing is two lines from two players that actually are they very similar in terms of power, playing yeah. the lanes completely different. It like 30 feet. I don't think it did. <laughs> I think it was like four. Third straight spare for Dom. And he'll start the seventh. On the left lane where he's been struggling. Oh, come on. Struck two out of three times on this lane. <laughs> that was 7-10 for a moment. <laughs> for a moment. Yeah, some great pin action here. Watch this head pin to the sidewall. 7-10 is up. 7-10 is down. He was staring that one down, wasn't he? Barrett versus Kent concludes next on Fox. PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. Lots of attractions near us here in Lake Wales, from the Bach Tower Gardens to Legoland, and you can see them all from the ground or from the air. Hot air balloon rides available seven days a week. Hey, I got to tell you, that hot air balloon ride that you and I shared? Magical. Magic. I'll never forget it, Randall. Happy holidays to you and your family, my friend. Same to you, buddy. Four years ago, Kent was your PBA Rookie of the Year. He's trying to close out 2018 here with the win. Nine.
Nine down as the four pin refuses to budge. Just a bit high again for Marshall, leaving the four pin. Changes balls. Look out. Woo! Put on the skinny jeans to kick that one to the side. There it is. Hey, Randy. Have you done your Christmas shopping for me yet? Not yet. I've got an idea for you. Okay, that last minute Christmas gift is just in a couple days. The PBA's got you covered. All you got to do is, even you can do this, Randy. Just click the Flow Bowling link on the PBA.com homepage, and you can purchase me or anybody in your family or any of your friends the Flow Bowling subscription for the bowling fan in your life. Flow Bowling, the exclusive home of PBA's Extra Frame. It features live streaming of all Go Bowling PBA Tour and PBA 50 Tour events. So you're, you're talking stocking stuffer. I'll, look, I'll take whatever I can get from you. Stocking, <laughs> something I got to unwrap, even in a bag with tissue paper. Marshall Kent takes a seat with a strike. Just his fourth of this match. He's yet to pair any of them together. Barrett, though, trying to get his first double of the game. What a start to the season it was for Dom winning in Japan. And then on Halloween, getting that U.S. Open title. In between, became a dad. Pretty good year for Dom Barrett. Yeah, the uh, lanes have blown apart, mm. and they're a mess right now. And <laughs> Don Barrett is, oh, that's you go. You go get it right. even though he's leading, he's not liking what he's looking at in terms of bar reaction. I'm going to take a look at Don Barrett here with our track technique, and I want you to watch how he creates power. Mm. This is how you do it, folks. You get that nice bend in that elbow, and then right at the bottom of the swing, you just unleash it like you're throwing a yo-yo into the lane. Cupped wrist, bent elbow equals power in the sport of bowling. Boy, and that plant foot almost in the gutter. Three bagger. That was a great shot. Commanding lead now for Don Baird as he gets a strike there in the foundation frame the ninth, working on three in a row. Starting to pull away Marshall Kent chance though to get back-to-back -back strikes here he is in dire need of one right now down 29 to close out the ninth he hasn't struck on this lane the entire match yeah great time to get his first on the right lane well the Scenario is simple. Marshall Kent can strike out as we take a look at him tripping the nine pin. Extremely late. You can see that sigh of relief there, but the, the, the score is as follows. Marshall Kent can strike out to shoot 218, which would force Dom Barrett to get the first strike in the 10th frame. We go to the left lane though, Randy, and as you noticed, he's had so much success there. Four strikes already on the left. Perfect on that left lane. There you go. Inside a target. Oh my! Happy holidays! Santa came early to the Kent household. Right, how many times have we seen that from Kent today? That ball went through the nose, and it looked like it was going to go through the nose, and then all of a sudden, that pin and that pin fell late. I like that. Come on. You always need a little luck. Oh, oh my goodness. Hang in there, big fella. Something didn't feel right, and Marshall Kent, yep. and this is a part of being an Take athlete, being able to do this with a 16-pound ball right at the moment of truth or at the release point and stay behind the foul line.
Full rack attack on the left lane by Marshall Kent. You know what he just threw, Randy? What did the he do? A bone! A what? A hand bone! God, I missed you. God, it felt good. It's so good to say that. So good. The beauty is, that's Don Barrett bone, steps Rob? up. I got a chance for another. Stocking stuffers full of ham bones. <laughs> things out. Don Barrett must strike first ball. Last time on that lane, he went broken. Remember, look at Marshall Kent and that reaction, and what a great finish. <laughs> when he needed it most, he came through, but that great break, second shot in the 10th frame where he tripped the 4-6. Only one strike on the right lane for Don Barrett, but it came the last time he stepped up. In the eighth frame, you see what he needs to win. Strike and six. Marshall Kent wins oh, that soft 10, the undoing oh. of Dom Ferry. That looked like a great shot too, Rob. How many times did we think Kent was buried and done today? And he's the last man oh, standing in the last Hold event on, of 2018. <laughs> Just a great finish. You know, he had some life when he saw Don Barrett go Brooklyn on that right lane. And I know he said to himself, listen, if I strike out, I've got a chance. I put the pressure back on Don and force him to strike on that tricky right lane. Zero tour titles this season, but he closes out 2018 with the PBA Clash title. Kimberly with our winner. Rob, thanks so much. So, Marshall, you know what? Let's be honest, you had a little bit of luck going into this final match, and you definitely brought it with you. You came from behind, and you forced Dom um, to strike in the 10th, and that didn't happen. This win's got to feel good. It feels really good, yeah. It's, it's been a little while since I've won actually anything, so... Uh, it's coming out on top feels awesome. I mean, it, was, it was a struggle out there for both of us, but 2018 was bittersweet for me. I made a lot of shows, but never was able to come out on top. So to be able to end the season you know, on a good note really gives me some, uh, some confidence going into the next season. Merry Christmas to you. Congratulations on winning the PBA Clash. They like to say sometimes it's not how you start but how you finish. And Marshall Kent finishing 2018 on a great note to kickstart 2019. I agree. It's, not, it's going to only help his confidence moving forward. And he's going to move his action to Arlington, Texas. We are with you live Sunday, January 6th, 11 a.m. Eastern over on FS1. Again, every PBA event coming your way on Fox is also streaming live on the Fox Sports app. It wasn't easy, and at times it wasn't pretty, but in the end, it was 100% effective. Dom Barrett into the title match, but in the end, it was Marshall Kent winning the 2018 PBA Clash. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in the new year with the PBA on Fox.